Lately, I feel like most of us are pretty sick of being cooped up inside. It's been a weird year and a long winter, and it seems like most people, myself included, are dying to travel again. Luckily for us Canadians, there are a ton of gorgeous destinations within the country to check out. And for those of us who love disconnecting in nature, camping is an awesome way to do that, more specifically van camping. Maybe it's cliche, but my ideal vehicle is a VW van, and they're easily the most iconic adventure vehicle of the past 50 years. The Fully Charged Show put it best. The reason why it's so popular, I think, because it symbolizes freedom. It's a very simple design, it's colorful, it's, it's characterful, but it symbolizes freedom. You can go anywhere, you can modify it how you like, and that's why I think this car always became much more than a car. The irony is now surfers can't afford them because they're too expensive. I've been daydreaming about getting our own camper van to start traveling and kind of breaking up the monotony of routine lately. So to test out the van life and explore without fully committing to buying our own, today we're showing you what kind of adventures you can take in this VW Westphalia with Honest Camper. So the cool thing about this is that if you're trying to plan some summer adventures or a road trip this year, this might be a great idea for you. Honest Camper is owned by a guy named William. He's a dad who runs Honest Campers as a lifestyle business, but not only that, he's a one-man show. I'm William, I uh, own Honest Camper. Um, Honest Camper is a super fun, cool, um, choose your own adventure style camping company. Um, I'm a one-person show at the moment, and um, so do everything from maintenance to cleaning to business to admin to um, general excellence so yeah that's that's my stuff general excellence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so if you're curious about the van life or maybe you're thinking of something different that you can do this summer renting a camper van might be an awesome way to just kind of explore your own province or explore your own area so before we set off on this adventure i want you to meet rose so rose is a 1986 vw westphalia affectionately named after golden girl rose nyland so the cool thing about traveling in a Westie is that once you have all your gear inside, you're fully equipped and good to go. You've got storage space for your clothing, food, and any other essentials like heaters, um, which is particularly um, a vibe when it comes to camping in March like we did, because it's a little bit pre-season, so it gets a little bit chilly. So having room for those luxuries like a heater is just chef's kiss. Also, Rose sleeps four thanks to the pop-up top that make the VW van so iconic. So we left Vancouver early to catch the ferry to the Sunshine Coast. And right away, I noticed how beautiful it is to have a little living room on wheels. So it's a space to get ready, you can read, nap, or do any other kind of laid back activity that you would at home, but in scenic locations or in nature. So when you know that you can go anywhere and you have everything you need, it's extremely freeing. All the way up to the sun. wild but every single site at this this camp space has your own personal dock so there's like a spot here to camp and then there's a spot or then you get your personal dock and every single place around the lake you get that like 
who invented this? Who did this? This is amazing. Our first campsite was a place on the Sunshine Coast that our friends Josh and Michelle scoped out. It's a domestic you fight. You tell me, you just snuck it in there. Domestic After fight. In the realities the of the woods. <laughs> it's not all easy it's breathing. It's not all love and joy. It's mostly bullshit. <laughs> And despite it still being March, okay. this place was perfect. It felt like we were just <laughs> suddenly dropped into midsummer, and I couldn't have asked for more. What's your cheers to? To how much a piece of shit I am? Yeah. To Josh. To Josh for being a piece for of being shit. Being a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get a better angle for you. Here's the other thing about van camping. Setup is a breeze. You can literally just park and crack a drink and you're good to go. Um, each time we set up camp, Michelle and Josh were like hustling to take out their tents and like set up tarps and just load everything in and out of the car. And me and Alex would just be straight chilling because the job was done by the time we, we put it in, in, in park. All you have to do is just like kind of open the doors and you're set to go. Alex is 6'2 and he's like, <laughs> There's a ton of space, damn. If you fold the, the bed halfway back, you can stand like from here all the way to here. Oh yeah, that's true. And then if you pull it out more, then that's when you sleep up there. Yeah, so you pull it out. Oh, I see. And you can sleep up here, but then you have less room to stand. So during the day, you can just fold it back. You roll over to the other side. <laughs> there you go. So when it comes to the essentials of van camping, uh, this particular van is already fully loaded. William had thought of pretty much everything you could ever need and then stocked the van with it. So there were a lot of times where we're like, oh, we, we wonder if this is inside. And there always was. So he had like dishes, cutlery, coffee, French press, aluminum foil, dish soap, propane heater for the colder nights, a double wide sheet, Bluetooth speaker, little camp chairs, you name it. So these are all things you wanna have on hand if you're van camping on your own. The one thing we do recommend you bringing on your camping trip is a hatchet. So you wanna be able to cut and gather firewood and not just like rely on the store-bought wood. Um, a hatchet allows you to scavenge a lot of these larger branches on the forest floor and turn them into firewood. So that's really helpful because not only are you providing yourself with firewood, but also getting rid of all that forest brush helps prevent forest fires which in BC is a really big problem. Now, when it comes to food, you can be pretty flexible when you're van camping. And that's because a setup like this came stocked with the two burner stove, mini fridge, and sink to clean up when all is said and done. You can also cook over the fire depending on what you wanna prepare, but it really gives you a lot of flexibility of like the level of meals you wanna create while you're camping. Van life in Canada is actually pretty big. I didn't actually know van camping was such a big trend in Canada until I moved to BC. So like in Eastern Canada, camper vans are pretty far and few between. Um, also people in the GTA aren't generally as into camping as their BC counterparts. So on the West Coast, you see camper vans everywhere you go. And it's like a huge subculture that's far reaching all the way north and uh, all the way back down towards the US border and beyond. So I can kind of see why though. In BC, there are so many stunning places to go. You've got mountains and inland lakes. You have stunning forests. You also have deserts and oceans and beaches. So you really have a wide range of beautiful geographic like locations. The best part is that nothing's too out of reach. You can drive basically in any direction and end up somewhere that's actually worth exploring. The geography of BC makes it easy for you to stay out in nature without having to venture through sprawling cities, freeways, and concrete to get from point A to point B. The same can't really be said for Ontario unless you want to travel north and be genuinely in the middle of nowhere. In the past couple of years, the van life trend has really taken off on social media. And I wanted to know why now? So I asked William what he thought about it. Well, it was definitely, you know, is I think still one of the uh, most popular lifestyle hashtags out there. Yeah, I guess like people will say, you know, do what you love and the money will follow and all that good stuff. Um, and I guess I kind of followed that. I really, I like building things. Um, I like the idea of kind of making something that people can enjoy themselves and kind of craft these like lifelong memories in. Um, sounds kind of cheesy, but that's kind of, I really like that idea. And um, I was kind of done with working behind a desk. Uh, you know, all, all due respect to 
all the folks that do that, but I, I just couldn't do that anymore. So I needed something that, you know, I get to build, I get to fix, I get to kind of uh, see people experience kind of these journeys and, and trips where they kind of create these lifelong memories. So that's, that's kind of why I do it. Speaking of freedom, it was really incredible to explore a new area that we probably wouldn't have ventured to otherwise. So we found this like little tiny town pretty far north called Lund that was tucked along the coastline. The weather was kind of rainy, so we're like, oh, we're in the middle of nowhere. We don't really know what to do. But then we found this like little gem of a town and we had the best fish and chips I've ever had. And we got to play games and just really enjoy the charm of this random little place. So since we spent our first night at an inland lake among the rainforest, we decided that we'd spend our second night at a wreck site beside the ocean to just kind of like switch it up a little bit. Surprisingly, we were so sure it would storm <laughs> during our stay here, but it didn't. Uh, actually, where we were, although we could see like the ocean and the shoreline, the trees did an amazing job of sheltering us from the wind, even though we were close enough to the water to like hear the waves fully throughout the night. So let's talk about the reasons for getting a camper van. The main reason or use case that I find compelling is that it's a lot more versatile than most other forms of camping. For example, when you're tenting, you're really limited by weather conditions. Additionally, when you're traveling with a tent, you need to have a safe and secure area to pitch that tent. So finding a spot can be really challenging in the peak of summer when all the campsites are full and public beaches and parks don't really have an overnight policy. Conversely, if you're, if you're in a van, you can park virtually anywhere for a quick stopover. This makes it way easier to do longer trips because worst case scenario, you can always park in like a Walmart parking lot if you're in a strange city and all else fails. That's another benefit to camper vans as well. City travel is actually possible. If you're tent camping um, or if you're just car camping, it's kind of awkward to try and sleep in a city because there's no real safe area to do so. When you're traveling in more populated areas, tenting locations become fewer, so you'll likely end up renting Airbnbs. And Airbnbs are fine and they're luxurious, but it can really add up in terms of expense. I also mentioned weather, but I wanna elaborate a little bit more on that point. In areas like BC, you could reasonably camp for most of the year in a camper van. So that lengthens your adventure season from February or March to like early November. Traveling in Rose was actually pretty incredible when it came to the weather. Um, and on our way home, we were waiting for the ferry when it started to storm. And out of nowhere, it just started pouring. And we just kind of kicked back and, you know, we had two hours to kill. So we made a little breakfast, uh, made some coffee. The ferry and we've decided to pop the top, put the heater on, make some food. Little hearts on the window. Rose is perfect. Rose is perfect. Breakfast is served. And having the coziness and comfort of an indoor space made this moment one of my favorite from the whole weekend. I was able to just like curl up with a book <laughs> and some coffee and listen to the rain hit the roof. And about an hour later, when the sun came back full force, we decided to pop the top and lay in the top loft in the sunshine. And that was also so luxurious and nice. It was probably the most luxurious experience I've ever had waiting in line for the ferry, <laughs> which isn't a very fun activity. Um, <laughs> but this type of luxury is something you just can't pull off in a tent or even Goodbye. car camping. It gives you a lot more time with your friends to just enjoy and not stress about the logistics of camping, which can be very time consuming and mentally draining. Overall though, like until we're ready to buy a camper van, renting with <laughs> companies like Honest Campers is such a great way to have a good time. And during the pandemic, a lot of local businesses have been hit really hard. It's tough as like, 
a one-person small family-owned business. So if you want to help support Loco this summer and you want to go on an adventure that's a little bit different than maybe what you're used to, definitely check out Honest Camper. Um, this isn't sponsored, I just wanted to do a collaboration with this company because I thought they were so cool and I've been talking to William for like a year and was just really inspired by his story. So um, check him out and there's also the other video of the van tour that you can watch as well. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys!